mom was a stay-at-home mom. She was a teacher in her past. She's a very smart woman. Love my mama. Um, Pops. I hear Albanians, you can't make up mother jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Is that true? I, I mean, yeah. You guys like, I've heard they like, they don't translate like how we say it in America. Like the swear word, uh, mf -er. Doesn't yeah. translate the same like in, in Albania. Yeah, they doesn't. like take it very directly and they, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. There's something about moms to us. Yes, yeah. yeah. Cause the, the guy that even the guy in our company, <laughs> he's 30, 40 years old. His mom, he keeps his mom in his mansion. She got like her own like room. They can, yes. it's a really united. Like anytime I see him do like dinner in his house, the mom, the mom's like involved, head of the table, like. He's real tight, tight with the mom. I don't know the where his dad's at. The moms are our queens. Yes. No matter if she's not, she's not in a in a castle with yeah. a with a thing on her head, with a crown on her head. Yeah. To us, that's our queen. Yes. So we got another episode of Adversity Kings. We have Indri Shiha. Yes, sir. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Awesome. So what nationality is that? Albanian. Albania? Yes, sir. Okay, bro. Let's born go. and raised over there. Let's go, bro. What part of Albania? So I lived in Fier, but I was born in, um, well, actually, I take it back. I was born in Fier, but I lived in Patos, which is like right yeah. next by. And um, it's like in the middle of Albania, but okay. like on the left side. Okay. By a um, big city known as uh, Vlor. Okay. So like I'm in the heart of Albania. That's crazy, bro. Um, it's the it's that red flag with the black. What is that? Yeah, the two eagles. Two, two eagles. Okay, cool. It's, it's crazy you say that. Um, so I'm a franchise owner in a life insurance company. And in one of the other franchises, one of the top sales leaders currently for our company is like straight from Albania. Like his accent is still like pretty heavy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. broken English doesn't spell everything properly, but he made like five, six million dollars last year. Yeah. Just, just straight profit and uh, absolute killer. There's, there's a, and he, and he brought like he's like he's got like an Albanian team. No shit. Know? So they're like they like I don't know if they're just selling to like a bunch of Albanians yeah, in America right? or something, or they got some type of you know tight niche thing going where it's like Albanians only trust Albanians, but they're uh, they crush it. So that's yeah. that's they crazy. got a work ethic, uh, insane work ethic. Yeah, the immigrant work ethic is is incredible. So <coughs> yeah, he's he's a good dude, and uh, I don't know if you maybe you know his last his last name's Hiro. I don't know. His Hiro. Yeah, I don't know if that's how you'd say it in Albania, but I, I, I met I, I met him. a few other. Uh, Albanians around here, one or two other. I, I couldn't tell you the name, but I, when I met when I met with him, we were at a networking event. And he told he told me like like the Albanians in Chicago, like everybody like knows. One yeah, another, so. they do. They really do. I don't know. I kind of like. I have this thing here. I guess I I guess say I'm like the different one. I don't really try to get in tune with the, uh, like the clicks. Yeah, yeah. I try to just like stay in my own lane, just do my own thing. Yeah. But there's a community here in Chicago with them. Um, Boston too, Philadelphia as well. Yeah. There's a big community of them. Over there is more than over here. But the more I'm uh, going about with uh, life, the more I'm meeting over here Albanians over here. Like yeah. some with dealerships, some with shops, some with just um, various of businesses. I'm trying to see if this one guy, say his name is Donnie or something. Nice guy though, He's in. Uh, he was an accountant, I believe. Really? So what is the uh, diversity lottery? Is that, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, yeah, so pretty much over there, it's uh, like the lottery system here, you win millions of dollars, right? Yes. Over there is like the chance to come to America. Okay. And get a citizenship. So you gotta do like five years of, when you come over here, let's say that you get picked, yeah. And it's like literally they do it like in the TV show, like yeah. they do it like this and they pick out the names. Um, so you gotta be here for five years without getting in any trouble, without, you know, no BS. And then after those five years, you go and take your uh, constitution test. Yeah. And after the constitution test, you get your citizenship. Okay. So we came in 05, we got ours um, citizenship. Yeah. Uh, lucky to be here, grateful to be here. Yeah. But it's like, it, it's just such a, I don't see much people over here in, like in 2023, like right now that still have come here with that. I don't know if they're still available to it. Yeah. So like, it's another reason why I feel like I'm so lucky that yeah, like, blessed. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what is the, what is the, what, what is the government style? Like what is the type of, I guess you would Over say there? democracy or yeah. What, what would it be in regard to Albania? How's it structured when it comes to, you know, politics? Um, that's actually a good question. Cause I really never paid attention to what they yeah. did as the politics. Do you go back and visit? I do. Is it, does it seem like it's booming or does it seem like, okay, like, is it like a drastic difference? Is there like See, that's the thing, rich, like, poor, middle class, or is it just you're oh, either rich or you're poor? Oh, it's either you're rich or you're poor, but the rich are very minimal, minimal, 
So yeah. like the rich really keep it together. Yeah. And in my view, honestly, the people who are in the po- you know who are up there in the politic game in Albania, like the government, the president, yeah, you know everybody else, uh, there there's some affiliation to the mafia with them. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I look at it. Yeah. Because the uh, the way they go about things, the way they do things, they don't they don't go into the EU system, meaning that they you know try to be like everybody else over there. They're trying to still just be their own people. Yeah. When you go over there, there's not many signs of American you know. Uh, uh, American, like, let's say you're traveling on the road. Yeah. And you see a bunch of signs like, go here, or go there for like, we're not, it's all Albanian. Yeah. So like, if you're a tourist over there, it's really hard to get around. Yeah. So I see like, they do that because they don't want many, you know, yeah, yeah. over there. They just want their own people. They just want to control whatever they can control. I mean, they've been doing a lot as it is to grow the country. They've yeah. been, they put a lot of um, road systems, a lot of highways now from yeah. like when I was there to now. Yeah. Before, like when I was there, it used to be, I mean, still to this day, there's not many um, yeah. like trying to get around. You still got to go through the mountains. You still got to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But they're changing it up like a little by time, little by little, little by little, like they're investing money into the country. Yeah. While before it used to be none of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, to the eye at least. Um, I feel like... <coughs> As time is going on with all the, with like the politicians over there, they're still trying to like do what they can for their own good, but also for the good of Albania. Yeah, the country itself is beautiful. They could do so much to make more money off tourism. Yeah, but anytime I see pictures of you know when I have friends that go over yeah. with the Albanians in our company when they go back and visit, it does look crazy. It is beautiful. It's yeah. just it's just so if you're not a tourist over there, you kind of get just get lost. Yeah, even yeah, with crazy. me, sometimes I'm like, good thing I know how to read this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because otherwise, I mean, like, you know, Google Maps works there and whatnot, but like, it's still just, yeah, it's like, it's like going, um, so see, the thing kind of thing is like when you go to a foreign country and like nobody sees these type of people, they're trying to take pictures with them. Yeah. It's like that over there. But a kind of cool thing is, um, you could travel there willingly, freely. Okay. It's not like you can't. So like some of these countries I'm talking about, like, let's say you go to North Korea or whatever, like, yeah. or Russia. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was watching Nelk's podcast, and they were just trying to take a picture with, you Yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I watched so that podcast. Yeah, so I was like... I can't yell in Russia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, literally. I was watching that, and then, like, the way they're, like, interacting with, like, uh, the Nelk boys, they're like, let me take a picture with you. Yeah. Well, to, with America and Russia, you can't just, like, freely just yeah. pop in there. But Albania, you can, but it's still just... It's it's cool to see. It's cool yeah. to feel type of thing. Because the people over there are just, when they see somebody like a foreigner, they kind of just, they don't care to stare either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't care. They always, they always just look and analyze you like, uh, yeah. like a bug. Yeah. And it's, this is how they are. But they're cool people. They're good people. They're yeah. very good people. They're very hardworking people. And like, if you go over there and you know, you ask somebody, hey, how do you get around here? How do you get there? They will, they will generally lead you in the right direction. Yeah. That is the one thing about Albania. Yeah. While, like, in other countries, um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to speak for them, but it doesn't seem as they're as open yes. to foreigners and, you know, to other people that to direct them in the right way. Yeah, while, while Albanians are always just, just their own people, they're in their own lane. Oh, you need some help? Let me help you out with it, no matter who you are. Yeah. That's how they are as people. It's pretty dope. Now, what about your family? What did they do in Albania, and then what did they do here? Okay, so my pops, he was always traveling and doing like a taxi service type of thing but from across the country as to what i was told Mm -hmm. so like there's not much knowledge that i have from like their past my mom was a teacher but then when she said that when she had me and uh my sister she stopped teaching yeah so then she was a stay-at-home mom and uh we stayed with our grandma my mom my dad's mom and um my dad just at the moment i think he just from time from the past had money saved up and then he was working as like a like not a mailman, but one of our cousins had like a mail company. Yeah. For like f- like a phone bills, so we he me and me and Pasta just drive, travel around the country just handing out phone bills type of thing. It might yeah. sound like what the, f-? but at the same time yeah. that's what it, we were doing. Literally me and him before like we came to America and like I don't yeah. know like he was doing before I, he, I popped in the picture. Yeah. But he 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 did enough to provide. Yeah. But so like mom was a stay at home mom. She was a teacher in her past. She's a very smart woman. Love my mama. Um, pops, I hear Albanians. You can't make a mother jokes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is that true? I, I mean, yeah. You guys like? I've heard they like they don't translate like how we say it in America. Like the swear word, uh, mf'er, doesn't yeah. translate the same like in in Albania. Yeah, they like take it very directly and they, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. 
There's something about moms to us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause the, the guy that even the guy in our company, he's 30, <laughs> 40 years old. His mom, he keeps his mom in his mansion. She got like her own like room. They can, yes. it's a really united. Like anytime I see him do like dinner in his house, the mom, the mom's like involved head of the table. Like, He's real tight, tight he, with the mom. I don't know where mom, his dad's at. The moms are our queens. Yes. No matter if she's not, she's not in a um, in a castle with yeah. a with a thing on her head, with a crown on her head. Yeah. To us, that's our queen. Yes. So we like you probably weren't allowed to back talk, mom. No. Bro. Like no, if that you, happened, you get a smack. Even if you do, the mom will let you know. Like you talking to your mother like that. Yeah. And it will hit you right away in your brain. Like it yeah. will just be like, oh yeah, that is mom. Like I can't do that with mom. Yeah. Even with me today, like. There's a lot of people in this world who will tell me, do this, do that, do this, do that. Yeah. The only person that, like, I would do something for is mom. Yeah. That's my queen. Yes. And, and yeah, yeah. Mom, the moms to us are, yeah, that's our everything. Yeah. You know, even with our grandmas. Yeah, Our yeah. grandmas are everything, too. So, like, family over there are, like. Really they, tight family. Yeah. They yeah. teach you that. They teach you a lot about friends and family as you're growing up. And the family is, like. So important. Yeah. I think that's I think that's a, a value we miss out kind of in the Western world nowadays. I think it's just getting worse and worse in regard to I like, like that you point that out because, bro, I see my friends. Oh, well, you know, I growing up, I seen friends, people, you know, answer yeah. their phone to their mom. And instead of saying, I'm you know, I'm good. I ate. I love you. Yeah. They just hang up. Or Why are you calling? Yes. Me? Why are you calling me? And yeah. it's like, bro, she calling you because she cares. Yeah. You doing that to her would just push her away. Yeah. And that's your rock. Yeah, that's your queen. Yeah, you don't do that to your. But like, that's just my view of it. But I always seem like my people here are just always just back mouthing. They're just like yeah. being nasty, crazy. Too. Yeah, and I'm just like, bro, just tell her you love her, and that's it, bro. Yeah. Like, you want to end the conversation? Just say, mom, I gotta go, but I love you. Bye. Yeah, it's that easy. Yeah, exactly. Like you gonna go home, and she gonna probably have some for you. Yeah, or gonna give you some loving. Like I don't yeah. know. I the way I see it is like I can't. I, I don't know how or why they grow up over here, like just bad mouthing their mom. But like over there, it's like to us, it's like we try to do everything we can for our mom. Yeah. So like you said, you're the um, he keeps his mom in his mansion. Yeah. That's the same view I have. I can't like when I grow like in a couple years, I'm I'm 25 right now. Yeah. And I'm about to be 26 yeah. this year. Uh, by 29, 20 or 28, 29. I need to start thinking about settling down and, you know, getting, having a kid and whatnot. Yeah. I already know that when I move out and get me a mansion, I need mama there with me. Yeah. So I could go and do me. I could go do my business. I could go yeah. do what I got to do to provide for me and my family and I, while mom is going to be there for the kids, with the kids. Yeah. I don't want nobody taking care of my kids except mom. Yeah. If she raised me like this. Yeah. I want my kids to be raised like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. That's fire. So that's the way we do it. Like they, <laughs> we grow up and they teach us a lot. And yeah. We're just like, you gonna take care of the kids, ma. I'm gonna get you a villa. I'm gonna get you a house. I'm gonna get you whatever you want. Yeah. You take care of them kids, and that's that's the, that's our view, and that's why another reason why we as Albanians, grow up and still maintain that success and maintain yeah. that um, the culture. Yes. You know the family, and which is really important. Yeah. You kind of see it also with like um, with Arabs. Yeah. And they have that same uh, sense of uh, lifestyle in them, too. Yeah, really tight family. Really tight family, which is beautiful. Yeah. Which is beautiful. Like, I would love to have a couple kids grow into business together rather than them thinking, oh, my homeboy could do this, so I could do this. Yes. I, it's that concept of family is so powerful. Yeah. And um, they teach us that very well. Yeah, it's fire. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think it, I think it really contributes to success in general for a nation. I feel like... Success for a nation starts with success in a home. You know what I mean? So if you yeah. want to break a nation apart, just break a home apart. Yeah. So I, and, and you hear it in that cliche quote. It's like a, a home united is a home that will stand, and then a home divided is a, is a home that will fall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Together we stand, and uh, divided will fall. So, yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's another way where we've been socially conditioned by, you know, weak individuals and people that have, that have gotten into political positions that, that can condition the masses of the Western world that now we have these these broken homes where it's it's maybe it's just the mother you know raising the children and i think the father plays a strong role as well yes. where it's like yep. the mother can I, I i heavily believe in having a strong relationship with your mother my, mm -hmm. my mom's my rock call her every night you know what i mean respectful conversation love her call her i tell her i love her every night and send her cookies and stuff but i think uh she had to play both roles she was not with us that much, but she still provided that love. But the only reason she wasn't with us that much is because my dad wasn't in the picture, so she had to work two or yep. three jobs. So yep. absolute workhorse. Yeah. So, but I think 
some of the homes will have a mother that's there and helping out with the kids, but not necessarily working and then taking advantage of the political system and the government system, which I'm not, we had to use it, you know what I mean? Right. Food bank, you know, food stamps, I grew up broke. And, uh, but I think some where it's like, if there's not a, if there's not a role model, the, the children will do, the kids will do what they see. You know what I mean? So you'll get that loving, Amen. that lovingness from a mother. Amen. But then if you're missing the working from the father, then you kind of have an incomplete picture. Yep. And then you have the work without the love. Now you've got a broken home because now we got young men growing up and just screwing everything. You know what I mean? And never you're settling right. down right and like finding a com finding a commitment. And that's where I, I think agree, it's, bro. it's so important to find. I th you you got to have both because you know we don't display any commitment to our kids. Or yeah. it wasn't displayed to us, so now we've got all these. That's it's. I feel like it's easier than ever uh, in America right now to get rich and separate yourself and be a successful individual because nobody's committed nowadays. You know what I mean? It's like there's a, around our age. It's like it's that it's that that new year, new year, new me type of people all yeah. year long. Like yeah. all year long, people like. Oh, I'm about to get on my shit. I'm I like about how to you get said in that. Shape. No commitment, right? No commitment, bro. Because that comes with so much. So much. It comes with so much. I, I, I'm with you on that. It's crazy. So, I'm with you on that. And it, it saddens me, but at the same time, I know it just makes opportunity for me even greater because I know I don't have competition. You know what I mean? Who's Mentally. my who's my competition? Right. You know what I mean? It's like this is this is weak. It's it's you. It's the and and I love it and welcome it because yeah. I think. If you have a limited mindset and you think, oh, these people are going to come over here and take everything. I love how you put in this Then together. you're small-minded. You know what I mean? But yep. it's, I look at it as like, if there's absolutely no competition, then I might just, you know, bottom out right here and be comfortable at the level that I've, uh, I've accomplished at this point. But I heard at a, at a networking event in Chicago, and a Latino immigrant, he had said, some, some, somebody had commented on his social media and said, go back mm. to where you ca came from. Mm. And somebody, some, and he's a millionaire, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody had commented back, what a shame is it that he came to your country where you had a head start and he's still beating your ass, right? And so that's where I look at all these, you know, 20 year olds and, uh, you know, people that are, you know, in the process of graduating high school, figuring their lives out or 30, 40, 50 years old. Right. And they've got, they're so quick to say, go back to where you came from or, you know, maybe being judgmental in regard to mm -hmm. any ethnicity, uh, ethnicity or mm -hmm. immigrants and thinking to themselves like, Man, it, they don't have an advantage. You have a disadvantage. Like from what I've heard, and I haven't been to many other countries outside yeah. of like Mexico. Right. From what I've heard and seen, this is a pretty sweet setup in America. Like it's, it's if you can't get rich here, it's beautiful here. Right. It's, it's beautiful. The here. opportunity. It's beautiful here, but getting rich here in comparison, like what are the odds out of one to a hundred getting rich here and and then going to Albania and trying to get rich there? I saw, dude. You know what? I actually like thought about this while I was over there, and like two months ago. I was literally thinking like, so what do you like to, to have this mindset of how to grow a business and how to build a business and how to start a business and all that over there. So I'm looking at everywhere. I'm looking at, you know, I'm sitting at the coffee shop, just looking around, just thinking like, how yeah. do you grow a business here? It, over here in America, we got so much wealth around us. Yeah. Over there, you don't. So over there, since <clears throat> not much people got bread, what do they need every day? They need Obviously, you know, stuff for the house, they need their coffee, and they need, you know, uh, little stuff like that. Over here, you got people who bring, how should I say it? They bring uh, stuff that are not a necessity to a need, right? So yeah. the reason because they have the wealth for it. So over there, you're not going to go and spend, you know, X amount, a couple hundred on um, car parts, and then another hundred for installation or... Yeah. You know, any of that. Some people do, obviously, because they're set up in that position where they can, but not everybody like over here. Over here, you got so many more people with um, money to throw. Yep. Over there, you don't. So I was thinking, while I was sitting down, I'm like, dang. So over here, what you could really do is really open up a coffee shop or a little convenience store. Yep. Uh, and when I say little, I mean really little. Like, with stuff that people need every day. Yes. Uh, bread, um, toothpaste, soap. Um, sausages, people, you know what I'm saying? Feta yes. cheese, like stuff like little things like that, food and just stuff around the house. Over here, you got people ready to just throw thousands at um, a motor to build. Yes. So that's like how my, my, my brain was playing. It was like, not many people here have money. So if you start something in Albania to, to, to grow that, it's going to be okay, start off small with something like that, but then like it's going to have to be the connections. And since everybody there, it's very. Con who have the wealth very like this yeah. they don't allow 
room for somebody to just walk in and just say, hey, can I get a wealth of knowledge on uh, how to open this or how to do this or yeah. or even the being allowed to open it there yeah. or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they keep it very segregated over there. While it's over here, it's it's up to you. Yeah. It's not up to them. It's up to you. Yes. And that's what I love about over here. And that's why over here, it like you said, it's it's the setup over here is just so beautiful. It's a sweet setup. Over there, is, you're going to literally go through a war just trying to yeah. get just trying to get the approval to do something type of thing why because somebody over there in that certain position or that certain area or setting has more authority and you have to go to him to in order to do it now you have to kiss his ass yeah and i was even talking to my uncle i was like so uncle like how did you go about you know with this position at this because he used to work in like an uh, oil oil refinery type of thing what he did was um there's obviously pipes around all through Albania with oil. The yeah. oil's get sent. There's a lot of oil in Albania. I didn't realize that yeah. until I went with him. Until I, two months ago when I was just driving around with him. And he was um, one of the head guys over there telling people, like, you got to go here, you got to go there to fix this, to bring the oil from here to there. So he's kind of like the, the management side so of things. he stay there? Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I was telling him, like, well, Unc, why don't you open, like, a fabric, like a, a factory or something with oil? And he goes, man, they already took it all. I was like, so who do you go to, to to ask or to get the permission to do this? And he goes, you go here to these people, but those people won't d- let you if you're just a somebody. You got to know somebody. So it's all very connected. Yeah. Over here, if you want to open up a shop and you have the minds, uh, you have the mind and the will to do it, you could do it. If you yeah. want to go open up something that will make you that bread, you could do it. Obviously, like <coughs> over there, it's harder than here and i i guess what i'm trying to say you could get it done both sides but over here is so much easier as uh you trying to get it done yeah it's up to you over there it's up to the somebody else yeah and that's the way the setups the setups is and it, not just albania like everywhere you go in other countries because of the control of how they do everything is very controlled i feel like in uh every country that's not the u.s in the u.s obviously there's control and whatnot but there is more freedom than those are countries and those yeah. countries it seems as you're free and you can do what you want to do yeah of course but when it comes down to really trying to get something done you you got a head honcho that you need to know in order to get it done and when i kind of like put it together i was like wow i could go to america and i could run up you know x amount this easy and over here how long would it take to run up that amount what's the currency in albania it's called uh lek l-e-k what does it translate to an American dollar? Uh, so one dollar in U.S. is like a dollar and eleven, uh, over there. Uh, so it's pretty similar. It's very similar. Yeah. Before it used to be like substantial. It was be like a, yeah. It was like a twenty-five cent, like yeah. a dollar to dollar twenty-five cents. Um, now it's like very close. Yeah. Because like I feel, I feel like the American dollar has been dropping lately. Hell yeah. 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 So it's we can be damn near the same. Yeah, drop, <laughs> shit's about to be a fucking peso. But yeah, bro, over there people spend like you know like two, three, four, or five dollars a day. Over here, you got people just throwing yeah. hundreds, thousands a day. Yes. So I kind of saw how much money was floating around. Yes. Over there versus over here. Yeah. And over here is so much more money floating around. A thousand percent. So much more money floating around. When did you get into cars? <sighs> bro, I grew up with a passion of cars. Like, remember me? And my my dad would just put me in his lap as a little kid and just let me, like, you know, just yeah, sit there and just keep my head up and just, you know, yeah. that's like the old, that's like the European thing. But then when I came here, I would always just just watch videos on cars. And when I came to like 16 years old, <clears throat> um, my first car was like a Volkswagen Rabbit. Yeah, and it was passed down from my sister. Um, my second car, I guess, was like a BMW 335. And that was like when I was a junior in high school. And what was I doing back then was literally just doing what I can to see what people needed and uh, sell it to them, like disposables or Nick type of thing. Yeah. Just something. Just I just opened my mind. Like, what do, what do these kids want to buy and they have money to buy? I was like, okay, well, nicotine, well, easy peasy. Go to a party, sell nicotine type yeah. of thing, right? And then um, I've always been good about just saving. I just I never had a, like a mindset of like, oh, where, what should I do with this? What should I do with this? Because yeah. I always stayed focused. That's what this other Albanian he always talks about saving. He's like, I want you to save a million dollars, brother. <laughs> 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 I bro. just fucked his accent up, but <laughs> no, 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 you you on point with it, bro. You're on point with it. That's my, how they my are. My boy loves saving, and but, but it's that commitment they have yes. in their head. They stay so focused on what they're trying to get done. They don't care if something scratches them, something pokes yes, them, tickles laser them. laser focus. Bro, they will literally just say, like a big bear. That's how I look at them. Or yeah. I, how I look at myself, too. Like a big bear. You could poke me. You could scratch me. You could do something. 
I'm still in my lane, focused what I'm trying Focus. to get done. And um, I saved up. Got my first car, and then I got into, like, the car scene with people and, like, well, you know, like, with friends. We go out and just do car stuff. I'm trying to get Hamilton, the Hamilton Collection local guy. Yeah. You know who I'm talking I, about? I, I love what he does. I'm trying to get him on the podcast, but I just saw he was hanging out with David Dobrik, and yeah, he's been by the month, by, like, the minute, his, his like, social social presence value is increasing. Bro. I hit him up a year and a half ago, and he yeah. was like, when I first started the channel, he was like, just get 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 some uh, get some videos out there and get some, uh, get some sus- subscribers and... So now we're 10 times bigger than when we first started, yeah. obviously. But, I mean, he's been growing rapidly. It's funny that you bring him up because ever since he came out and started this, like when he had like, like even 10, 20 on YouTube. Yeah. And my all my friends, like, they're very, well, all the people, I guess I should say, that I know because I have a couple of friends, like a handful of friends that I yeah. call friends. Acquaintances, I should call them. <coughs> I noticed that uh, they were like, oh, this dude, Hamilton Collection, he has these um, supercars. Yeah. And he's trying to start a YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, what else does he do? And they were like, well, he has a wheel company. He yeah. sells uh, rims, tires, has a different couple of rim shops, one for three pieces, one for these, one for deep dish, blah, blah, blah. So like, he has a different couple other companies. And pretty much, he's a, he has a big B under his belt, a billionaire. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, shit. That's dope for him. That's amazing. Yeah. So that kind of made me wonder, like, okay, so he got into the wheels. Now he's this age. He saved up this much. And now he's like, what do I do? Let me just start a YouTube channel. I was like, I love what he's doing. So I've been watching him, yes. how he's been doing all this ever yes. since he started with that. I've been, like, analyzing what yes. cars he brought in and how he's making his content more funny and more uh, amusing and entertaining. And I've been just been, like, analyzing and analyzing just, like, from, a, like from, a, from just the side. But, like, I've been loving it. Yeah, because he himself, he's an amazing person. Yeah, you can see him smiling. You can all tell the time. he's genuine by his, even by his content. You can just tell he's genuine. Exactly. Yeah. And there's some videos that he has of him just generally teaching people. I'm like, if you want to buy a supercar, what does it take? And the, the way he breaks it down on these videos is so just real. Yeah. No sugarcoat. It's just real. And like though I can see that him as a person. I'm like, I, I love the way he's doing it. I love what he did with the Iron Gates too. He opened up a whole just like uh yeah the, just they got a little section down there yeah and just for people to walk in and just check these out yeah and then this car and this season he's gonna be hosting more events doing more things yeah. for the community so i was like man hamilton collection i'm like steve you i want to shake your hand but yeah. i think i think i have type of thing but like yeah. at the same time but build a relationship more so take that that shaking hand to yeah. coffee and just kind of picking his brain yeah yeah, Steve is a, Steve is great, but then yeah. because like you got a lot of people like on YouTube who've been trying to grow. I've been yeah. watching uh, Nelk Boys grow the yeah. way they did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been analyzing from yes. like the funny videos to <clears throat> the seltzers to the podcast to still them just trying to do whatever they can. Yeah, and I always like notice their energy in the beginning to now and like how they are as who they are and what they yeah. are, and I love it. I absolutely love it. But like going back to like what I was, I was saying, how did I get into cars? I always had this passion about cars, right? Yeah. And I, something about cars just, like, makes me just want to work harder. Yes. Because, honestly, like, I look at cars, I'm like, I want to get that. I want to – it's, like, my motivation, I guess. It's kind yeah. of it's bad to say, but it's really not bad because of the way it's shaped me. Yeah. Um, but what I love about cars is, like, how, one, I become with the car. Mm-hmm. Like, when I get into the back uh, – in, in the seat of a car and I'm, on a, like, on a racetrack. Yeah. Um, the way I analyze the road and the way I become one with the car is like, I'm just like, I love these things. Yeah. I absolutely love these things. So I started with a car community back in, I was like a junior. I graduated in 16. So like by, you know, it's like 2016, um, we started going out and like car meets and meeting people. Yeah. So that's how I started meeting a bunch of people. I go to these car meets and I'm just a, I'm a talker. So I just talk to people. I'm like, what you do? Who, who are you? And some of these people were just genuinely just young kids with money yeah like their ogs just have money so i'm like that's cool you like cars i like cars what are you doing this weekend yeah it started off with that it started off to us becoming more close and then us meeting more people and going out with different groups and like so yeah. really you know um i guess high-end cars and just people with big big pockets yeah but these people with big pockets i would just learn that they just like cars and they just like shooting the shit yeah they don't like you know what i'm saying so i was like okay they cool people they like somebody i could go out and 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 just have a good time with so from there i'm just kind of opened my mind to like networking i'm like okay with yeah. these cars it's more of a network it's not just um 
hi, how you doing this weekend? This that like more of like, what do you do? Wh- 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 how can I incorporate what I do with you? Um, fast forward to like 21 years old, I got my first M car. It was yeah. an M3. Started still, so I was still going out, still yeah. meeting more people, more people, more people, and just meeting so many people. And I started growing my uh, social media channels. My best media social media channel was my Snapchat account. Yeah, I've uh, now I'm in like my fifth Snapchat account because I got it got deleted that many times. Yeah, it is what it is. And I used to get like 1.4k views a day on Snap, so I could sell anything I want on Snap. It was yeah. a car part, and that's how I got into just more into cars. I would see who needs parts. People would be like, Yeah. If somebody let's say somebody posted a video or something of like them needing a part or them asking like for help i'd be like i can source you that part yeah. that you need and i'll tell them like why it's happening and how it's happening i'll tell them and how i knew is just me being on forums and just reading on what's going on with my car so i learned knowledge by being in facebook pages and just literally reading people going and saying hey i'm dealing with this issue what do you guys think it could be and yeah. people in the comments just typing away and there's a bunch of facebook pages for cars that people literally just interact like that yeah and I noticed that and I would just read the read. So I gained a knowledge or two from that. Then I go on Snapchat and I just see people dealing with issues. And I'm like, the same being me, just yeah. responding. Then I wrote in my brain. I was like, well, if he needs that part, I could go to the damn junkyard and pick it up for him and take it off a car. Even if I don't know how to do it, got the tools to do it, my boy does. Yeah. So me and him go together, go to the junkyard, take off the part and sell the parts. So I started getting into selling car parts. Yeah. And then I never got into like uh, being an affiliate for a company or anything like that. It was more of just like, just literally just, if I got the car part and you need it, I got you. Yeah. So <clears throat> I started getting so in tune with people with like that because everybody was like, oh, he, he's the guy what you need for the car shit. Yeah. He's the guy to ask what you need to take it to and this and that. So I was in the mindset of uh, in 21, um, 2021. So like, by then, I had the M3 still, and I got myself an M4 also. So I had the F82 M4. Okay. It was like a Yas Marina Blue. Then I had the E92 M3. So I had both. Okay. And that kind of grew my image because I went and bought a supercharged kit from, like, Indiana. I drove to Indiana. Yeah. Came back, put the supercharger on the car in a garage. And, like, the garage was, like, in the hood kind of. Yeah. And, like, here's this little white boy in the hood driving with his little nice car. But, like, yeah. that's where my boy lived because that's, yeah, that's, that's what he could afford type of thing. Yeah. So he was over there. He was going to school for uh, to be a lawyer. And I'd be over there, and we built the, we built the car in the garage. Ended up doing 200 miles an hour. And yeah. That, yeah. And I, that the fastest I ever gone is, like, 176. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was it was nuts. Hard. That sounds crazy. It was it was like it's like time warp. It's like everything is yeah. going And was it real sturdy? Cuz mine was a little shaky once It was. That's the that's the beauty of like the M3. It, it was like real it just, sturdy. It just planted to the ground. It's like yeah. a hi- I call it a highway queen. Yeah. <laughs> so my buddy has a 720S yeah. and uh we where I went the 176 and he was over 200. Yeah. And uh it was I don't know if you ever t- have you ever driven in Florida? So there's there's a road from and it's I don't think they call it like death road or something. And it's, it's a straight road from like Miami all the way to the other side of Florida. Okay. And you can get there. Like if you're driving normally, it'd probably take you like three hours or it took us like an hour and a half. Yeah. But it's a, it was a sweet, it's through the uh, Everglades no. and it's like straight bro. Yeah. I gotta I, go over there. Yeah. It was, it's a, it's from Miami to the other side. And I forget, I, I could think off the top of my head if, if it said, I think it starts with a B or something, but it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful drive and it was sweet. I mean, I wish I had the fucking McLaren. I had, so I had an I had an F type, yeah, and I had an XFS, and then I traded both those in. When I moved into ownership, I traded both those in because I was just slinging insurance. I was just a typical insurance leader, so I had, my profit margin was bigger. Yeah. But then when I moved into franchise ownership, then I got to pay for the leads and the buildings, and I just got a a Black Widow. I was gonna get a TRX, and the TRX was just 10k more than the Black Widow. Yeah. How was the Black Widow? I like it a lot. I put a MagnaFlow on it, which I kind of wish I didn't. Is it too loud? Or? No, it's not. Don't, I don't notice a fucking difference. I really? put the MagnaFlow on it because I like loud. Yeah. And uh, I had the, I did a, uh, a delete on the F-Type. Yeah. And that one was like, an F-Type already runs kind of loud. It's got yeah. good pops. But with the delete. The delete was fucking crazy. Like, I would, Oak Brook Police would like kind of fuck with me a little bit. They'd yeah. be like, hey, look, you, we're getting complaints. Yeah. And I liked that. And uh, it but with the MagnaFlow, I put I dropped the delete cost me three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars on that. The MagnaFlow cost me like two grand, like yeah. twenty five hundred. Yeah, but I did good. it through, <laughs> I did it through. Uh, and I don't know if you uh, know these guys. I think it's uh, 
I think it's Bl Black something. Black Star? Black Star. Yeah. And I met with the C. I don't know if you remember. He, I know a lot about him. Passed away, bro. I, that night that that happened, I was sitting at home and I look at somebody reposted their. I met him on a rally, actually. For real? Yeah. So I was going to get him on the podcast. I went and did a meeting with him for like 30 minutes. Dude, and took notes. He was dope. He's a do he was a dope ass dude and gave me a bunch of like dude. genuine notes on like being a business owner. Whoever All the adversity this, he went through, bro. Whoever watches this and knows Larry knows that Larry was that motherfucker. He was, uh, bro, and his he black was star, a dog. You've been inside their building? Nah. It's so clean. But he had he, it beautiful in there. Yeah, I've seen I've seen pictures. Yes. And bro, being with Larry out and like he, his best friend, or I shouldn't say I shouldn't speak for him, but um, what I saw. They had a really good connection, really good relationship. Those are the that's my F type and XFS, but then I just I just have the Black Widow in the middle now. I love it. I'm big on raps. So when I saw at the very end, you want to start to get into uh, yeah. is it P PPF? PPF for rap and yeah. Code. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get thing. some raps from you, bro. I, I love, love raps. I'll I will spend some money on some raps. I, I will love to do anything I can with that. Yeah, I, I love, love raps. Too. But he Larry, had Larry, and um, his friend. You were saying Daryl. Okay. They had this relationship as friends that I've never seen grown man have. Yeah. They, they, they made me laugh. Yeah. The way their relationship was, yeah, they yeah. made me laugh. I could even see it like their own wives were like, man, these boys are boys. Weird. Yeah. These boys are the, they just, they're, bro, yeah. the, the relationship they had was just this friendship. And I was like, wow, like, that's, that's genuine. Yes. Because most people walk around, you know, trying to hide and like, yeah, trying to yeah. fuck around. Yeah, exactly. While Daryl and Larry, they were, they were just them. Yeah, yeah. And I love that because yeah. that's me. Yes. I just, I'm just me. I'm just a goof. I, yeah. I like to have fun. Yes. But in reality, I know I could get done behind it. when it comes down to business. When yeah. it comes down to getting money, I know I could get done. Same with them. Yeah. So I saw a lot of them and like uh, a lot of me and them. Yes. And yeah, when I and Larry is just this very just open like he'll just look at cameras and just be yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah. he gives no and that's a lot of just like i saw so much of like me and them and i was like wow like yeah they, just being around these guys just just makes you feel good yeah they had that aura our aura in, in yeah. them they're they're their 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 souls are i mean larry the uh, daryl still obviously yeah but larry and daryl together yeah was just like a beam of light in the room they made you laugh they, and i when i met larry and i seen uh that night that uh accident i was like it ain't gonna be the same no it ain't yeah no it ain't gonna be the same because they were sometimes the, the the light in the room yeah they would laugh and make everybody laugh yeah you know what i'm saying so when that when, when that happened recently um it was during crown rally yeah and uh, when yeah, I yeah, it was a GT3 RS, wasn't it? Uh, no, and it was a 911 Turbo S. Oh, okay. It, it was messed up because he had just gotten it. Wow. The day before that, they went on Crown Rally. Um, they hosted an event. It was Daryl that hosted it. And it yeah. was like um, they had some tents there. I pulled up. Uh, that's when I had my M4 GTS. Okay. And um, I pulled up and I'm just chilling, and I just see Daryl and Larry just doing them, and Daryl's being funny, Larry's being funny, and Larry yeah. Larry was leaving that at that moment. And he um, was driving that 911 Turbo S yeah. that he had just picked up. And I was like, dang, that color is hot. Yeah. Because it's like a baby blue. It's like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Like a light, light blue. Yeah. And I was like, that's, that's hot. I was like, Larry, bro, you just got that. You, yeah. you don't miss, Larry. You yeah, don't miss. Swag. Yeah. So uh, when I saw those pictures, I was like, this is going to hit the community. Yeah. And then uh, there, was, um, there was like a Cars and Coffee type of show at the Drake. Uh, the following week and um everybody was there that larry's people yeah and i could just see they like obviously they were doing them and whatnot but it was just not the same you know with yeah without larry I, yeah that larry without what i noticed in larry was a lot yeah and like obviously i don't say much when not but like what i noticed in larry was a lot and i was like i i god bless that man yeah i hate to see what happened and how it happened but it should teach you it should teach you that you know when you on a rally doing one you know going fast it it's fun it's thrilling it's but you got so much and to take care of on your shoulders as a family and yeah that you you know got to be cautious in 2021 20, i got myself in a bad car accident yeah i almost lost my life and um the way it happened was i was messing around i was at my this dude's ass and i was just toying with him i was just like where are you going where are you going well, me and him hop on the highway, and there's just open road, and some cars, I would just be dogging them. Yeah. Just dogging. I got videos of me just dogging them, but, like, this day, 
I was just on his butt, and I was like, "Where are you going? Where are you going?" I ate the stuff. I ate the shit because I saw the person in front of me break hit the brakes. I didn't want to hit the random because the way it happened was we're in the middle lane. He hits to the left. I'm about to hit to the left with them. The person in front of me. So he hits the left. The person in front of me was just hits the brake. I didn't have room to go to the left. Wow. So I hit the brake and got out of the way, but my brakes locked up and I ended up on the wall. Wow. Yeah. So when I realized that, I'm like, it hit me really hard. Yeah. And I was like, there's a lot that you got behind you rather than there's just this moment yeah. of fucking around. With Did you total? Cars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Car, I got out when the car was on fire. Wow. And um, I never posted pictures of it. Yeah. I never wanted to. But like the people that the, the people that knew about it know about it type thing. Yeah. But when I seen like Larry with that happen, like with my accident, it hit me that I was like, I have fun, but be safe. Yeah. So I learned a lot from just, you know, watching these people who are inspirations or role models to me do their lifestyle and do them. Bro. And it, it, that I feel like has also built me and formed me into yeah. the way I am and who I am. You were 21. I was, uh, it was in 2021. I was oh, okay. 22. I, was, I had my last accident when I was 21. Yeah. So that was three years ago. It was probably 2021, 2022. Yeah, right. And uh, it was the XFS. <coughs> I just picked it up for my boy in Nebraska because that's where I was running my, my insurance office there. And uh, I put an intercooler in it and I put a tune, like a new intercooler in the, and a tune on it. And so it's whistling. So I love, like, I love the whistle. I'm yep. going and I'm behind, like, I'm in a, it's like a two, Two lane, one way, like kind of like a highway, but not really a highway because it's Nebraska. And um, this old lady's in front of me and she's driving slow, but the roads are a little wet. And I don't have insurance because my insurance, I had re starting off in the insurance industry, I did not sleep. I was just, I would just be 24 seven trying to sell insurance. So I would fall asleep behind the wheel. Yeah. And I'd run it. I get, I never hurt anybody or hurt myself, but my car insurance is like $1,000 a month. Yeah. And so I was like, I would try to go a month on, a month off. Yeah. So that way I could save a couple of bucks. Of course. You got to do what you got. Exactly. And I love that you put it that way. Because I do so much too to just save a nickel over here. Yeah. Over I was like, there. yeah, I'm going to definitely save this. So it was like month on, month, until I got like a, a notice. You know yeah. what I mean? There was like, hey, we need car insurance from your loan or whatever. So I, uh, I go to I go to pass the lady mm. and she doesn't have a left turn signal and she she's not merging she turns left and I know I don't have insurance and so I don't want to I always thought to myself like if this ever happened I'm not I'm going to do whatever I can not to hit the person cuz mm -hmm. I don't want them to say where you have where I have to end up paying them for the rest of my life like they got they hurt their neck mm -hmm. so I completely avoid her but it's like a hill so I ramp this hill going like yeah 60 but I'm still like and there's trees so I'm like in the air and it's like GTA I like hit off the trees <laughs> But per, it, luckily behind the trees are houses, so I didn't fly through someone's house. <laughs> then I come down, spin around, and uh, total, total it, but no insurance, and it's a $50,000 loan. Yeah. So I had to fix it, plus, so actually I got out of it, and luckily, like, I don't, I won't tell the, I'll tell the rest off there, but I fixed it without, so I put like another, put five, 10 down on it, but I had to put four, like I, I tell everybody that's the most money I ever spent in one day, because I spent, 40 50 bands basically in the process of getting it fixed yeah because i made it i made it look exactly how it was so i could you can put two and two I together gotta do, gotta do. exactly so that was that was a eye opener from there and then i transitioned into ownership yeah basically 40 50 gone there another 40 50 gone to opening up my own deal and then i was like i had the f type and i was like i gotta downsize and i didn't yeah. really downsize because the f type and the xfs are pretty much they're pretty much the same value as the black widow but there's something about being in it, a car with some speed where I'm always gonna want to like yeah. go a little fast. It, it, it always it always uh, tickles me also like to just press on it. Yeah. And uh, I even like told myself the other night when I was coming home and uh, I don't I 55 was open, bro. And yeah. I have a supercharged M3 right now. Yeah. And uh, is that all you got? At the moment, yeah. Okay. But this summer, I'm I, I got some coming too. Yeah. I got something adding to the. You're gonna tell us or you're surprised? I'll I'll tell you off air. Okay. But I'll I'll do like a surprise. Okay. I want to do like a surprise for it. Okay. Um, and I, and I, I'm gonna get it though. Yeah. I the, I don't something about this car. I just like it, it. It it needs to be in my hands. Yeah. Yeah. You I, know what I like before you go is the I think the Lamborghini just revealed the like the off road Lambo. I think it's is it the Ducati Lamborghini. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the off-road. Yeah. It's kind of raised a little bit. Yeah. Looks a little bit like a doom buggy. Yeah. I don't know. I like something about that. I like. You I fuck fucking like. Yeah, I fuck <laughs> with it. I fuck with it. I was uh, looking at it. I was like, what? Yeah, I fuck with it a little bit. Yeah, the supercharged M3. It has a roll cage, has coilovers. Yeah. Um, so after my accident, actually, I got an M4 GTS. Yeah. 
And um, the way I did it was I had the M3 at the same time, so I went and sold the M3. Um, yeah. Got my money back from insurance for the M4. Yeah. I didn't hit nobody during that accident. That's what I was trying to avoid. Yeah. I didn't want to hit nobody else, so I, I only dealt with insurance. I, ha I didn't have to deal with more. Yeah. I had to, bro, they had made me go make a, um, a re-driving test. So I had to redo my driving test. Wow. <laughs> That's that's funny. I'm over here like, oh my yeah. god! So I had no in, I had no license. I had to regain my license. Then I had to deal with insurance. You drive I, manual or you do automatic? I well, I drive always in manual mode. Okay. I, I don't like the okay, car. Okay, yeah, you drive. Okay, you know. Yep. yep. But like, I don't like the car being in, in drive unless I'm like on a highway, like yes. on a road trip. But you, you can drive. Can you drive a stick? Is what I, I could. Mean. Yeah. Okay. So I, I figured Albania I, probably has more sticks than they do. Okay. That's all they got. Okay, I figured. Dude, sometimes I ask my buddy with his little like 2004 330i, it's like a little Beamer. Yeah. But he has this manual. And like sometimes I'm just hopping in that and I'm just like, this is the most fun. Because yeah. it's just fun. It's slow, yeah, yeah. but it's just so much fun. But in my car, I always drive in the manual mode. Yes, yes. Um, uh, the F82, the M4s, <clears throat> if you, there's a crank hub issue and the crank hub is like a, a thing that spins the timing chain of the vehicle. Yeah. So that crank hub, when you, it's, it spins everything. So it's communicating from the engine and everything to the timing chain, just yeah. how much to spin and whatnot. So when you're in drive in that car and you just kick it down, it'll go from like, a seventh uh, gear to like third gear. Yeah. That kick right there. Oh, it's mad. Is what that drop is crazy. Just yeah. The pull is so heavy when you drop it, from high to a real low gear. Exactly. But that's what ruins that crank hub. Oh. Yeah. It like strips it down. It strips it the f and yeah. it, it, it makes it so like people have these all these crank hub issues when they tune the cars and whatnot. So like yeah. another reason why I always drove in manual mode and why I got so used to it when I was driving that M4, um, I never drove it in drive. Because yeah. I didn't want to ruin my crank hub. Yeah, yeah. So the way to do it is like you put it into gear, then you get on the gas gradually yeah. to build the boost and to build the timing chain, and then yeah. you give it the kick. So like if you're trying to race, you know what I'm saying? You don't just step yeah. on it. You always, I always kept it in that manual mode because I didn't want to <laughs> blow the engine. Yeah. <laughs> doing these little things, not you know, to save my <laughs> <laughs> a thousand percent, bro. I completely agree. <laughs> but after that uh, accident, bro, I got the M4 GTS and um, I wrapped it baby blue. And I had that for a year, and then um, actually kind of, you know, same thing with, uh, or same idea with, I had to downsize. Yeah. A reason because I was in mindset that I was going to go and move out of the house. Yeah. And I was going to start my own company. Yeah. Um, one thing I didn't realize, is one thing I actually want to talk about on the podcast, is credit. Yeah. I wasn't there with it. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't there with it, so I'm over here like, oh. Credit's so stupid. It's so great, but it's so stupid, because I remember being 18 and having like, 20 30 set aside yeah and i was like oh i'm definitely gonna get a great car right. i go to get a car I, I have it's not that i had a bad credit score i didn't have any credit history correct so i all i could get was like my first car that i bought myself was a honda yeah honda civic or something because like that. that's what they could approve you for yeah and yeah. it was like a year or two of me making a hundred thousand dollars and that before i could get something decent so i went from two honda civics into the uh jaguar xfs and yeah. i bought that base and then i wrapped it Probably a couple months after that, and then a couple months after that, I got the F type. So, but it was crazy because yeah. I was making all this money in the insurance industry, and like and all my boys were buying nice whips, but all their parents were, or maybe they were older than me, yeah, or their parents started them on credit when they were 12. That's another thing. 13, I was they, like, they, I don't have no credit. They put them on their primary exactly. uh, user, and my parents didn't do that. Yeah, my, you know, I don't blame them. It's not like they know everything. Yeah, and, and this, how this damn country works, they just know how to raise some damn kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love my OGs. I love them. Yeah. But I didn't realize that about credit, bro. So I'm over here now. Now, like, damn, I just I thought I was there, but I wasn't. So yeah. I saw this car and I had to realize that credit was a big issue. So I'm over here learning credit hacks. Yeah. And that's one thing that, like, if anybody's watching this to go and do as well. Yeah. Learn credit hacks. Yes. It is so beneficial for the human and for the or for the person living in America. And the reason I put it that way is because if you understand credit, you will do so much more yeah, the as a person, yeah. as a, like if I said, as a human, Yes, <laughs> you will do so much more. The way, the reason I put it that way is because like I went and got a 2023 Kia Forte and through my credit after I built it and I've only put a thousand down. Yeah. And you might be thinking like, well, what, what, what does that mean? Well, let's, let's put, let's think about this. I uh, sold my car and uh, only had money. Mm -hmm. So now all I could do is um, 
I, I can't move into a house because yeah. they won't accept me or, or won't approve me. I try telling them, like, what if I just put in, you know, one step ahead? They're like, no. If I wanted to do that, it had to be somewhere where I wasn't comfortable. So I was like, well, damn, I got to stay at, I gotta stay home with the parents. Yeah. Um, I built that credit. And um, when I went and got that $1,000, I put $1,000 on the Kia, right? Mm -hmm. And that $1,000, I used my damn credit cards. Yeah. I, d I was like at that point where I was like, I got money to do something, but like I don't got money to, to do a whole lot. Yeah. So I literally did it in that way. Now, how I was able to go get that vehicle, obviously I make money every month and all of us make money every month, but I need to go get this vehicle, right? And I got this right now, this Kia. Yeah. And it's actually what I use for when I need to go on long distance drives and like yeah. I need to go travel far because the M3 is just not for that. Yeah. And it saves me on maintenance and oil changes and everything else. I got to yeah. You could live this fun lifestyle, but you also got to be smart with it. You can't just be just just beating the shit out of this car. And then you throw two thousand dollars this month. Yeah. Next month. Next month. So I got this Kia Forte and it's saving me a lot. The way I got it was through that credit. Yeah. So the fact that I had that credit and I was like, and I got it, it was very beneficial for me. Yeah. So now I'm still building this credit. I'm still slowly building the credit to the point where I need to go get this car this summer. Yeah, I could do it with myself. Yes, I don't need to be asking mom and dad, hey, cosign or anything like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. because what it got to when I asked mom and dad cosign, they got their own life. Yeah, they got their own BS to deal with. Yeah, they're not gonna be there at that moment when you need to go, and yeah. you kind of be sitting there like, oh well, I want to get it done now. Yeah, you could get it done now. You worked hard to get it done now, but you credit is not allowing you yeah. to get it done now yeah you did all that work but you didn't realize that credit you need that credit in order to go get it done so Thousand one percent. thing was like uh, once i started learning credit hacks i was like okay i know how to build credit started learning about business credit started learning yes. about um house hacks i started just learning about all these kind of just opening my mind to all these little yes. things because i was like okay well i'm trying to mentally move out grow up yeah what are some of the things that when you grow up you need to be knowledge of thousand percent is all these credit hacks house hacks yep. business credit hacks and the reason you might be thinking like why business credit hack we could go get a loan for a lot of money to invest into something so let's say you put it you got yourself in a position where somebody's like yo if you hand me 20k right now i you'll be having you know x amount per month coming to you yeah. for the next x amount of time yeah and i'm mean, honestly if you could go use your business credit to do that with why the why not you just put yourself in a position to double that 20 40 or yeah. double that 20 triple that 20 by having this business credit so mm -hmm. what i look at it as is um a way to easily go and use it for investment yeah so <clears throat> learning these little things allows you to be in a position for opportunities so when you're in this position for opportunities then you got a position to open up your brain and leave it open so when you don't so let's say i don't have that credit for the business credit or i, I don't know anything about that and somebody puts me in a position like well gee you know if we go down to Florida, pick up these face masks, this actually happened. Uh, pick up these face masks when COVID happened. I, mm -hmm. uh, somebody was like, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to buy 20K worth of masks. I'm going to come back and I'm going to sell them for 35. They're already sold. The guy's waiting on them. But I'm going to have to go down there and get them. So what he knew was the person down there and the person over here. And I remember masks and every all these little medical things were just, just making money to people. Yeah. And um, I was like, dang, well, if I had... 20k right now i could go drive down there with the u-haul truck which i would do it yeah i wouldn't why not it's time consuming it's hard work but shit, I, yeah you know what i'm saying i was like if it if it's money it's money for me yeah and that's one re another reason why i'm where i'm at today if it's money it's money yeah that's how albania is right? yeah <laughs> i don't care if i might have to stay up all night yeah y'all gonna get that money <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's a good thing to have and i was like man if i had that 20 bands right now I could go come. I could go drive down there and come back. So let's say I use my business credit, boom, boom, go, go down there with a the twenty, come back. I already just paid it off, and I got another fifteen sitting yeah. for me. So business credit yeah. allows you to have uh, more opportunities. Yes. To make more money. Thousand percent. And that's what I love about like little hacks about that. So like people, that's another beauty of America though. People don't know um, how and why or this or that with America but if you have these little things that are called credit in America you could just move around so much yeah. better you can make more money over there in Albania yeah there's a thing called credit and whatnot but like it's not like over here yeah over there it's more of where do you work how long you've been work there for and uh okay you get approved it's not like they got credit cards I was asking about it. yeah I was like y'all got credit cards they're like what 
I was like, never mind. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm saying too much. Yeah. Too, <laughs> too deep of a conversation. Yeah. Right. As we wrap up, we're a little over an hour, hour in. Um, I got two or three more questions. Mm-hmm. If money didn't matter, what kind of car would you get? If money didn't matter? Yeah, right now. Money didn't matter. You go out, get whatever you want. Um, a twin turbo SVJ. Yeah. Who has the gold one around here? <sighs> the gold SVJ? Yeah. Um, you ever seen the gold SVJ around here? It literally looks like gold plated. Really? Yeah, gold SVJ. I see it over at uh, the Oak Brook um, shopping center sometimes. He probably just wrapped it then. I don't know if it doesn't look like a wrap. I mean, it, if it is a wrap, it's a... Oh, Whatever it is, it's gold. Is it like a maybe they took it off if it was a wrap? Yeah, it, it's, it must have been just now that he got it done or like this season. Yeah, because if it, I feel like all these SVJ guys or whatever, when they go out to these Drakes and whatnot, like these Drake Hotel cars and coffee meets. Yeah, that's where they host them at the Drake Hotel. Yeah, um, they all pop up. So like, and I'm always there. And yeah. Especially last season, I was at every event. In the past yeah. couple of years, I've been at every event that that's yeah. that's big like that. I like to get my face out there. I like to go and say hi to these people that I know. Yeah. So I remember them. They remember me. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know who it is, who it is but um, a twin turbo SBJ, but or, um, you know, I love track toys. You know that Apollo IE? I don't know. It's like a V12, and it's like it sounds insane. What's the What's the brand? Uh, it's literally like a A P O L L O I E, and is it's just it, like it's a European? tone. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But the car itself is just um. A V12 monster. Yeah. Or the Pagani. See, the thing is with me, it was like when it says no, mo- no money matters. Yeah. It's all about like, what's the nastiest V12 out there? And Pagani, I forgot the name of this. I, I'm even going to try and say it, but Pagani got this V12 that screams. Yeah. And it's new. It's a, ra- it's a track focused car. And the way it sounds and the way it shifts and the way and everything about the car is just nuts. Mm-hmm. So if it was any of the no money mattered, it would be like between those cars. But I say the SVJ because of the SVJ with twins, it just sounds like a f- missile. SVJ is fucking sick. Bro, the SVJ with that's twin that's turbos. That's my goal within like the next five ish years. Bro, with the five twin seven. turbos, yes. it literally just sounds insane. Yeah. Sounds better. With me, it's like it sounds better than the Apollo. Yeah. It sounds better than the Pagani because of the, those turbos. I still think I liked, and I mispronounced this, so forgive me. It's uh, the Konegseg. How do you? Konegseg. Konegseg. Yeah. The Gera RS. Oh, yeah. I think I would. I don't know. What I they think Daryl got one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know Hamilton's got a. <laughs> fuck. I, I miss all the bro, time. Hamilton got like 20 cars on the way. Yeah. It's like insane. another like 40 million cars yeah, on the it's, way. It's so insane. So you can kind of think about the community here in Chicago with cars and what the car it's scene is going to be like. Because I came from Pittsburgh. I started selling insurance for, from Pittsburgh. And it's like, there's some cool cars. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you'll see like one SVJ or two SVJs. And oh, you think Pittsburgh's like a bigger city. Yeah. You come to Chicago. Bro. Car world. This shit is like. And car you'll see world. 20 year olds with like an SVJ or something yes. like that. And be like. Either one, maybe they got lucky or did something. They hit big, like a big investment or a big crypto or something like that. Right, right. Or it's like you said, the OGs are just like, fuck it. Go and there's nothing wrong there's with no, it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. I, I'm, I'm the type I of I love like, it. I love cars. That's a sweet ass car. It only becomes, something only becomes wrong. And I don't care about your age. When, when you are like a hater or you've got like a bad energy. It's that negative in you. Negative energy I don't want to be around. You know what I mean? I don't even care if, Amen. It's, if it's blood. You know what I mean? Right. The only exception would be if my mom's in a bad mood. If my mom's in a bad mood, I'm going to tolerate You're going to get her some flowers. Yeah, she's going to be all right. She's going to get some cookies. flowers. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, could, we could talk. Anybody else? No. You know what I mean? I ain't got time for no negative energy. I, I feel that 100%. Second question. What's your favorite food? You got a favorite restaurant, favorite dish? I love this question, actually. I um, love food. I lo- I'm such a foodie. I am such a foodie. I honestly, I love, love food. You could take me uh, in, a, in a different country and we just try different foods. Yeah. And I'll be there like a little kid, like, what's this taste like? Yeah. What's that taste like? Yeah, yeah. Um, my favorite, favorite, favorite food is hard. It's probably going to have to be straight up. So I got stomach issues. So like my stomach can't really take everything. Like, yeah. like fried chicken, greasy stuff, oily stuff. I can't do it. Kind of, I'm a little lactose intolerant too. Yeah. So the one thing that I will always never get tired of is rice and chicken. Yeah. You, I go to the club. I come home. I want some rice and chicken. Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That rice and chicken to me is like yes. my all time. Like no matter what, some rice and chicken is going to hit. Mon- Monday through Thursday, I eat pretty clean. I just do like salmon and, and ground beef. You yeah. Know what I mean, but on that, the weekends, I'll do more Italian. I'll do cookies and stuff yeah. like that. I like Italian a lot. I love pasta. Yeah. I love pasta. I see, bro, the more I go, like, the more I realize that, like... Like steak, too. Yeah, I love steak, too. I love it. But, like, I say rice and chicken because it's just, like, 
it's so basic yes but my brain is always saying yes to yeah, it positive inspired. feedback yeah while like with any other food my brain will pick at something that's not perfect about yeah. it you get like a lethargic fat ass feeling like uh, i don't know and that too just, right your body just rejects it like so yeah on a weekend if i really fuck up and get some popeyes or something yes like, uh, like i love that sh it tastes yeah, great it tastes but great. like the way it make me feel is not I'd the be, greatest. I'd be fucking plastered. Right. Man. It feels like you're like high. Yeah. Because you eat good. Like if you're consistently eating good, you're, it's like it's like it's like if you put like 87 in your fucking Lamborghini. Right. You know what I mean? It's like it, all right, exactly bro, some shit. Because I, I love right. they put it that way. F food is fuel. Food is fuel. Bro. I've been going to the gym for the past year, like really heavy. Yeah. I, um, really heavy. And one thing that I realized about it was, food is literally fuel. fuel. For our body, for yes. our mind, for everything about uh, in us and about us. Yes. And I try to tell it to my boys sometimes. And like they'd be like, I'm like, what you eat today? Yeah. They're like, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm like, yeah. I, I'm not going to educate you, dog, but you should go get you some, yeah, some, some, rice some and grilled chicken. chicken. Yeah. yeah, some rice and chicken. <laughs> Last question. Do you like movies or TV shows? Do you have a favorite movie? Do you have a favorite TV show? Um, or a hobby outside of cars and working? Something around these lines. I guess is um okay i see the, i see the like, direction of the question um this is funny my favorite tv i'll, I'll even state it in my all of them my favorite tv show would probably be the avatar of the last airbender fire show i love that yeah, show fire show i love it yeah that's fire <laughs> yeah that's fire <laughs> for real right yep. that's a little side of me that like yeah i'm still i'm, I'm a little kid at heart sometimes yeah. But I'm like I, a little I, kid at heart. I get time. it done. What you need me to yeah. get done? Yeah. Whatever it is, I get it done. But yeah, uh, me, me, me being me, I'm, I'm a little kid at heart. Yeah. Um, favorite movie, I think the Transformers was always my favorite. The first one. Yeah. That's always been. I'm my still. Favorite. I'll still watch every single one. My movie standards are so low. Like, are they're they? coming out with another Transformers. I'm gonna watch. Are they it for sure? I love that. Yeah. See, like I could say like uh, the racing movie, like whatever, like Tokyo Drift. Yeah, yeah. great one too. Um, or the longest Need yard. for Speed was the movie that got me into the Connect Egg. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm still saying it wrong, but it's all good. But that's what they had that in there when the kid died. I don't know if you watched the Need for Speed movie. It came out in like 2013, 2014. I probably seen it. Fire movie because that's what because the key was sweet, bro. That like, that diamond. Fucking, yeah, I saw the key. The just the way like the car and everything. I was like, nah, bro. That car is just a masterpiece. 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 Bro. And the hobby outside of it, like cars, bro. I feel like. I feel like a hobby for me would be traveling. Yeah. I love traveling. I, I love meeting people in different yeah. countries of like in the, in the middle cultures, of cultures, food, like, people. And I say we meet some people in the mountains. Yeah. I, I would love to meet that. I would love to have an interaction with that. Why? Yeah. Because it's so different. Yes. And I love like the like different like cultures or like that's not even saying the mountains. Let's say we go somewhere like across the country. Like, yeah, let's meet these people who are wealthy and not wealthy. Yes. yes. Traveling for me. It makes me just happy. Yeah. Uh, talking to these people and just, th but I think it is, is a genuosity. Yeah. These people are genuine. These people yeah. have no act. And whatever I meet here, is sometimes is just act. Yes. They, people putting masks on. Yeah. All the time. Always got to fucking And mask I'm on. over here trying to read the real realm. Them. Yeah. While people, when I'm traveling, like in the mountains, they ain't yeah. got no mask. They ain't got nothing to hide. That's why I feel like I put it that way. Because I always feel like I don't feel as comfortable with like the mask aspect or the act. Yeah, well, that's what I always see, and that's what I always you know I, I can feel that when I meet somebody. But when I'm traveling and meet these people, yeah, that that's a hobby for me. I love yeah. going out and traveling and just meeting genuine people. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I feel that. I love it. So as we uh, as we close out, where can everybody find you, social media wise, or anything you want to <coughs> shout out? My IG is B A B U Motorworks, Babu Motorworks. Um, yeah, you can catch me on YouTube as well. Uh, B A B U Lifestyle LLC. Okay. And then my TikTok channel is probably the the one you would want to look at. Yeah. I have a lot of cool clips on there of like just my lifestyle and my cars. Uh, my TikTok is sauced, so like sauce, like yep. like like yep. pasta sauce, but yeah. sauced. Yeah. M three. The reason I put it that way is because the car just has a sauce. Yeah. The car just has the sauce. Yeah, yeah. So uh, sauced M three. Let's go. What What's the common way to say like goodbye in Albania? Mirupavshim. 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 Is that just goodbye? Uh huh. Is there like a God bless or anything you guys say? Um, anything else common you guys say when you're saying goodbye or anything like that? I, I mean, Aruk Tumbar. Aruk Tumbar. Meaning uh, the road ahead, a smooth, beautiful road ahead. Yeah. Because everybody's on their own path of life. So Aruk Tumbar. Aruk Tumbar. 
So because you know when Yeah. Man, why am I buying you? It's like that already. See <laughs> how many languages I know. So many fucking languages. She's Russian. She speaks Russian. Really? Yeah. That was dope. Yep. So that was dope. This was fire, bro. This is one of the longer podcasts you. we've done. Uh, probably what hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, hour and a half. If you don't mind, I'll show you my uh, other office. I'll show I'll you my to. sales side real quick, and then we'll uh, we'll head out. Cool. Let's do it. Cool. I love to.